It's time to put all the bricks together. Okay, I got the bricks cut right there, all organized. I got the bricks that I don't need to cut over there, also organized, I guess. And I got a bunch of metal cut there, some over there, some on the pile on the floor over there, and we're gonna put it all together. First off, if we look at the plans, I made like zero plans for how I was gonna do the shell around the thing at all. I'm not even gonna pay attention to that anymore. But basically, I wanna have a frame down here made of these. I want to have a shell around, uh, but I want it to be like disassemblable because sometimes you have to change bricks and uh, other maintenance kind of stuff. So uh, we're going to weld this together because I don't have to take this bottom thingy apart and we're going to end up screwing the rest of it together. Removable and uh, with a solid base. So to weld this up, I want to put the bricks on here to double check my measurements, make sure everything fits, and hopefully have a foggy chance of getting it relatively square. I also did a bit of work to flatten this bench top. Now uh, it's, and I, by flatten, I mean it was all twisty. And now it's within probably the size that this is gonna be. It probably only varies about an eighth of an inch. And you might think, Paul, eighth of an inch is not very good. Well, I know that, but imagine how bad it was before I did all this. Like, take a guess. I'll give you a hint, it was five times worse than that. Now, if you remember before when I talked about these bricks, they're roughly nine by four and a half by two and a half. So nine plus nine, four and a half times four, it's 18 inches on every side. And that's how long the long side of these should be. And I'm doing this on top of these bricks for a couple of reasons. One, to make sure they fit. Two, this, will, this is square, so hopefully it'll keep me square. And three, these are more fire resistant than my wooden workbench, as the many burns may indicate. Okay, these are not, these are not big enough. I'm going to take the uh, general approach that I usually take when this kind of thing happens, say, huh, that sucks, and then keep building anyway, making no adjustments at all. Fire up the welder. I'm just tacking, and after every little tack, I check to make sure we're still going square-ish. Now the test, can you flip it and twist it, and does it still actually fit? No, but it's not that bad. And I'm using a MIG, the MIG welder, not the TIG, because obviously I didn't clean this up very well, so TIG is right out. Also, I suck at TIG. Let's go! I also didn't exactly fit these very well, just kind of guesstimated and angle grindered away. All corners have been tacked, and it's only off by, eh, probably about an eighth of an inch, maybe? Just a hair small? That's okay. I can live with that. I suppose I should just weld up a bit more. I don't need a grinder to cover my terrible welding. What are you talking about? Okay, so that's, I'm uh, pretty happy with that. It, uh, it's still the same shape. It doesn't really rock much. So uh, yeah, happy with that. So for the next event, we uh, look at this dusty brake that I promise I'm gonna put on a stand sooner or later. This is a piece of metal that I've designated to be the main like shell part. It's gonna be open on the front where the, all the wiring and crap goes in, so it's just gonna be bricks there, but it's gonna wrap around the other thing. Now this, uh, I haven't told you any dimensions, have I? Those other, those square tubing things, they were, they're one inch square, eighth inch wall, and they're 18 inches on the long side, cut at 45s. Okay, this is mild steel of some thickness, I don't remember. It's 10 inches by, I think, 60? So if you think 18 inch sides, we got an 18 in the middle, 18, 18, three, three. Add all those up, it better come out to 60 inches or my math sucks. We already saw in the last episode how bad my math is, so uh, fingers crossed I'm actually right here. 
So here we go, three inch, three inch, 18 inches later at 21 inch. There are our, our first two bends. I'm going to, I have this backwards, don't I? I'm gonna have to come in through the other way. No, I just, I just can just start over here. Yeah, there we go, 18 inches later. If you're new to the channel, uh, you might be seeing how I tend to do things around here. Believe it or not, uh, some of the time it actually works in the end, which is always a miracle. Do not be fooled by this giant Eastwood logo right here. I am not sponsored or affiliated with Eastwood in any way. Is this even tight? No, these are not tight. Ooh, that would have been bad. <clears throat> I really like this metal brake. This is a pan brake, and that will not come in as a factor this particular part, although the, in a couple of parts later it might. Uh, actually, no. The pan brake feature has nothing to do with this build. So if you don't have a pan brake, don't worry, you can still build this, although you are definitely missing out. And would you look at that? The marks I made from the other direction, they actually line up. That's a good sign. That rarely happens. What I'm doing right now, I'm basically like getting it so that it's kind of tight and then I'm making some fine adjustments to make it right where I want it to be. And once I achieve the kind of fitment that I want, where I know it'll put the crease where I want it, then I crank it down and bend it to about a 90 degree angle. Now this brake will go a little further. Most of them will go a hair further, but there's, there's like bounce back. And I realize you probably can't see what I'm doing right now because I'm making a box, but that's okay. Boom! See what I mean? Open on one end, like a giant ugly Pac-Man. That does no, I, that does not look like Pac-Man at all. There's gotta be a game. Number munchers! Number munchers! That's what I'm thinking of, where you got the square munch and it says like, like eat all multiples of three. And you're gone. Does anyone else remember that? Sorry, that was totally random. Let's test fit, shall we? Oop. Got some, got some binding. Wow, talk about a friction fit. That actually fits really well. It's very tight. It goes on, but it's tight, which is very nice. It's even rigid and it's not built. And there's like more parts to this. Cool, this might actually work. I'm gonna try, uh, well, come to think of it, I need something here, don't I, to support these bricks? Huh. Okay, just solved the problem. I need to go buy more metal. So we're gonna ignore that, move on as per usual. So back down here to the floor break, and I have two strips like this. These are 18, I believe by two, maybe. And I think these are 18 by four. And I'm gonna put a one inch flange on all of them. So one inch, those will be one inch and one inch. These will be one inch and three inch. And you will see where these go when we get back up there. It's more, it's not super critical that they be one inch, but it is pretty critical that they be straight. So I'm just gonna use the thickness of my square here because I know the edges are not straight because I cut them on the floor with like the electric shears. And for whatever reason, I'm shaking. I only had maybe like half of my normal caffeine consumption. So like roughly eight cups. I don't have a coffee problem. You have a coffee problem. Shut up. Again, these are 90 degree bends. And I uh, believe these metal brakes are meant to be mounted on something. See, that's what I'm going for right there. Now I'm using mild steel and most kilns and other things usually have stainless, I think. Probably because of, you know, rust. I don't know if I should paint this or not. I kind of like the the rusty bare metal look. Personally, I think it goes better with the aesthetic that I'm going for of uh, some dude in a garage with a bunch of janky tools putting together some crap. Don't know why, but that just feels right. But don't let the jankiness of the garage fool you. I don't have a, I don't have a comeback for that. But not everyone is Tony Stark, okay? So these are gonna be very useful. I got these for here, the longer ones. 
See, they go, huh, that should line up better. Then again, maybe not. These are pretty big, and then I got these smaller ones for the front and back. Don't, don't worry, it looks a bit crooked, only because it is slightly crooked, but also this isn't like on straight. Uh, this is because this, this frame thing here is only going to be supported on the bottom by this, and uh, the top is going to be loosey-goosey, so I want these cross supports to kind of hold them in place. These ones, however, are longer because the bricks are going to, the well, this bottom level is 18 by 18, but the inner level is actually narrower, so there's going to be gaps on either side, and I'm going to fill those with ceramic wool. So the ceramic wool, I don't want it to be like exposed to me because it's not like it's not good stuff to be breathing and disturbing, especially after you heat it up, it becomes very brittle and it can kind of powder and and silica, and I I don't want to die, so I'm covering it up. One on the back, maybe not useful, but uh, consistency, right? Okay, that part all cut. Now for the lid. Now here's the lid on my actual kiln. You'll see it's made out of bricks. They're covered in some stuff. But it's got this strip of stainless. Oh, guys. The strip goes all the way around, and in the back, like back there, where you can't see, and I can't really fit the camera there, is like a, a screw thing to tighten it. So it's one strip, and you can tighten it. And you'll see it doesn't curve under or over these bricks at all. It just uses tension, so it compresses all these bricks, and the bricks fit so tightly together, they form this nice, tight thing. There might be mortar in there, too. I really don't know. But it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty solid. So I'm going to try that solution as opposed to the foundry furnace solution, which you'll remember. Here's the foundry furnace thing. The bricks, it's all encased and underneath. I wrap the metal under it. I don't want to do that. In fact, I don't even have a metal strip. I have these band clamps and these. Where, where did I put those? Here they are. Cut pieces of angle. These are one by one inch angle, and I think they're just cut two inches long. What I'm going to do is place them like this, one at every corner. Might shave down the corners a little bit so they fit a little tighter. Then wrap the clamps. You can kind of, you know, put one clamp into another and make one whole big thing. Put the clamps around them and tighten them so they will compress. That one has a strip going around, but that's also an octagon shape, eight-sided, more of a circle-ish. This is a square, so most of the compressive force is going to be in the corners and only in the corners. There's not really going to be much pushing like here. So I want the corners to take a lot of force. And this little strip, well that's just going to crush into this crumbly brick. That's why I got these. Yeah, hoping this pulling on this will help support it and won't crush. Failing this, I'll just make a strip like the other one. Man, this is a messy thing. By the way, I ruined this saw just for this project. You're welcome. I hope you appreciate it. I think I can get away with just four of them. That would be, that would be nice for the, the symmetry. Ah, it's becoming unmanageable. It's developing a mind of its own. It's like it's becoming sentient. Save me, Elon Musk. Okay, I might have gotten clamps that were a little bit too big. I'll admit it. Okay, there's a limit to how tight I can make these, so I tighten three of them to the max. And I'm going to use the fourth one. Nope, I'm going to use two of them. Loosening to make it fit, and then tighten it down. Almost got it! Ah, bingo! Okay, how many of you want to bet these clamps aren't strong enough for this? Because, like, they're only as strong as this little strip of metal on either side of the perforation. And I don't have enough of these for multiple passes. If it fails, I'll just pretend this was proof of concept and move on. By proof of concept, I of course mean not. Actually, let's see. If I can pick this up with my finger and all the bricks stay together, I will call it a success. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, success! Remember what I said, uh, even without anything holding the bricks together? Uh, if I just stack them on top of the, the, the oven thing, they will sit where they belong, and they won't shift, they won't fall in, nothing. So it's very stable. This will uh, help. I mean, after I use the thing, I'll probably have to tighten these, and I might even have to, like, come up with a new solution. But for right now, this works, and I'm happy with that. Okay, time to move this. Okay, time to assemble. 
I'm going to just stack things up. Huh, forgot to, forgot to grind that one down. We're gonna flip that over. Okay, I'm just gonna put this here for now. I gotta go buy some more metal and then I'll put a, a brace under here, probably like a thing, big thing. I'm just going to quickly throw the bricks on and then get the shield on and then, you know, just kind of scope everything out. And while it's all together, I'll drill holes to put screws in. I got a box of screws somewhere. Hmm, it's just a pinch tight. Now on one side, that's good because these bricks I've heard, they shrink ever so slightly. Like after using them a bunch, they end up shrinking just a little bit. So then that means it'll fit perfectly. But for right now, that means it's kind of a pain. Been a while since I've clamped anything on these on this channel. What's the point of owning way too many clamps if you're never gonna clamp something? That was a joke. There's no such thing as way too many clamps. Okay, these are definitely not gonna be strong enough for this, but we're gonna use them anyway. That just pulled the head right off that. It's holding though. A new plan, larger ones. Yeah, that one twisted right off too. I may need to drill larger pilot holes. Let's let's just let's just leave the clamps in place. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let's start with these. I have the arrow, remember the arrow? Uh, the arrow points toward the middle line, and you can kind of see the way the uh, the the channels there slope downward. So I know that brick goes there, and this brick, oh dear. That brick is too tall. I may have miscalculated this again. Let's just finish it up though, eh? Okay, well besides this slight oversight, uh, it looks like a furnace, right? You now we got the channels, right? Here's the bottom face channel. Made these a bit wide, but that's okay. I can just snug them up there. I don't want to slide them around too much because these bricks are very, very time consuming to cut. But you can see it, it's all, it all kind of fits, except for this like, how, how far off am I anyway? Two and a half inches. Huh. I was gonna put this across the top. Right, right, and that's 18 inches, so that'll tie the tops of those wings in. And then these, we're gonna go across like here. See, like that. Then I have one right here. And those all gotta line up, like so. And I'm gonna take this out. And then the lid. Set on like that. Not too terrible, except for the fact that it's really terrible. And then this extra space here, this will be slid in a bit. That'll give me just a little more, uh, well, I got two inches here. I'm, I'm gonna stuff that with ceramic wool, which I have in a bag over there. Previously mentioned, that is that is one inch thickness. So um, this, this is two inches. It's supposed to be two inches uh, when it's all kind of tie together. So I'm going to uh, put two layers in there. And then I'm probably going to use some of it maybe as a gasket between the lid and the body. But you get the idea, right? Do you think this lid will work? Or should I do my backup plan, which is strip all the way around and where it's split, just have like three of these things so that they can like, you know, there'll be more of them. So they'll have uh, more strength. They'll spread the load a bit more. Let me know what you think. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this failure. It's a minor setback. It will not add any additional videos to the series. Next one, it will be fixed. So this, nine inches, why how, 10 inches? What idiot thought this should be 10 inches? I'm gonna go cry now, see you next time.